Hello, my name is Tawana Brown and I serve as the Assistant Director in Parent and Family Programs. I wanna thank you for tuning in to our webinar Wednesday. Um, today we have someone discussing how to support your student through um, financial wellness. And so I will turn it over to you, Tiffany. Hi everyone, um, like Tawana said, thank you for joining us. I'm gonna get my PowerPoint pulled up. Um, I hope everyone can see this. Um, Tawana, can you let me know if, if, if you can see it? I can, yes. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, so like Tawana mentioned, my name is Tiffany Lawson. I'm one of the assistant directors in the Department of Health Promotion and Wellness. And one of my main focus areas is financial literacy and financial wellness. And so that's mostly what I work with here at the university. So this presentation, um, it's going to be brief, and it's just going to talk about what we currently do for financial wellness or our approach to financial wellness, but we're also going to talk about some conversations that are important for you to have with your student, um, and then we're going to conclude with some important resources that are available to all of our students here at the University of Alabama. Um, so the first thing I kind of want to talk about is our approach to financial wellness here at the University of Alabama. So we take a holistic approach to student wellness um, and we have the Alabama model to kind of help us make sure that we are addressing the whole well-being of our students. Um, and so the Alabama model kind of frames this holistic approach um, and it's divided into seven different dimensions of wellness that we focus on. And we know that by addressing these seven dimensions, we are helping our students to be successful. We're helping them to develop into um, awesome citizens. Um, and then we're helping with their cultural competence. Um, and so that's kind of the lens or the framework that we use when we approach all wellness here. Um, and financial wellness is one of those important components. And our goal is to make sure that students establish and maintain knowledge um, and skills to kind of help them to develop and maintain financial security. Because we know that they're not just going to be introduced to finances at just one point in their life. We know that this is something that's ongoing and something that they will be dealing with and working with for the remainder of their lives. And we want to make sure that they have a strong financial base or foundation of knowledge for their financial wellness. Um, another reason that we talk about financial wellness here at the university is that we know that college is a pivotal time for our students as they're coming here, um, especially when it comes to finances, because up until this point, you, their parents or other family members have been making most of the financial decisions that affect them or the money management um, you have been taking care of for them. Um, but when they turn 18, or 19 in the state of Alabama, um, then their finances matter even more because at this point, they're now legally able to do things that they weren't able to do before. So for instance, they're able to sign contracts, um, they're able to open bank accounts, they're able to apply for loans, and they can do this all on their own without the, the um, assistance of a parent um, like it was in the past. And so we just wanna make sure that our students are knowledgeable on these important topics. And so that's the other reason why we um, discuss financial wellness here at the University of Alabama. So as I kind of transition, I wanna talk about some important conversations for you to have with your student um, in terms of like financial wellness and getting them prepared. Um, the first one seems very, very simple, but it's a very, important topic. Um, and that topic is around creating a budget or a spending plan while they're here um, at the university. And then of course, even like after they graduate, having a budget and a spending plan is really awesome. It's actually pretty cool, but I may be biased. So, um, so in creating that budget or spending plan, making sure that you're talking about true living expenses and living costs and their actual needs while they're in college and kind of help them to differentiate between needs and their wants. 
Um, because I can remember and still now there are some things that I'm like, oh, these are things that I need. And then I, I kind of reflect back and be like, well, maybe they're not necessarily a need. They're just something that I really, really want. So making sure that our students kind of understand the difference between those two things. You also want to be able to identify who's paying for what. So if you are, um, if your student, for example, has like a part time job um, and maybe they are covering some costs or expenses, making sure they know, OK, well, they're co covering these costs and then you're covering these costs or expenses. Um, and then making sure to have a discussion around smart choices for spending uh, when it comes to like social and entertainment type activities, um, because there's lots of things to do in Tuscaloosa. Um, and so just having that conversation early on with your student is a really good idea. Um, another important topic or conversation to have with your student <clears throat> is the topic regarding credit. Um, and making sure that they are using their credit wisely. So <clears throat> um, it's important to explore, um, I would say explore, take a deep dive into credit or credit education, um, because we know that as, a, as, as individuals who've probably been working with our finances for a very long time, that credit is definitely important and that we wanna make sure that we protect our credit, protect our credit store, credit score um, and do all those things to kind of help strengthen it. Um, and that may not be something that our students um, are, that may not be something that's on the forefront of their mind. And so letting them know like, hey, what credit is, um, if they have credit cards, how to responsibly use those credit cards, um, discussing their credit scores with them and like what all that entails and letting them know what things can affect their credit score. Um, so for example, one of when I give presentations about financial literacy, we always talk about what students think affects their credit score. Um, of course, you go into like the details of like what credit, a credit score is and all that, but I'm like, I wanna know what you know. And sometimes you'd be surprised that students aren't very familiar um, with the things that can affect their credit score, or they think things affect their score when those things probably don't affect their score as much. Um, but letting them know that payment history is like a big deal when it comes to credit score, um, along with when they apply for different types of credit cards. Um, I know just recently on the shopping trip, I was in TJ Maxx and I love TJ Maxx. And so I go there very frequently. Um, and like, I've noticed like the last several times I've gone, after they finish ringing up all my things, they're asking me, hey, you apply, you are um, eligible for this TJ Maxx credit card. Would you like to apply? And I'm like, no, I'm good. Um, and then sometimes I don't even get the option of them explaining like the rewards that are associated with the credit card, the TJ Maxx credit card. They're just like, you know, hit the button on the, on the little um, credit card machine thingy. And so Things like this may entice our students um, or, for example, when I go to Ulta and like the credit card information is on their um, credit card thing as well. And they'll be like, well, if you know, if you apply for a credit card today, you can get 20 percent off of your purchase or off this specific beauty product. Um, and so letting our students know that they can decline those things, um, because like when you apply for different types of credit or multiple types of credit, like th that can ding your credit score. And so just having conversations around credit and credit score. And then how you can positively build your credit score is another important conversation to have. Um, you also wanna to talk to your students about taking ownership of student loans if they um, happen to have any student loans. Um, so with that, knowing and understanding the FAFSA process and the disbursement schedule, um, in our department of um, student accounts um, and the financial aid department, they're really good about providing that information with students and educating them on those things. Um, so definitely connect your student there and make sure that they're in contact with someone over there. Um, learning about the different loan options. So there are private loans, there are federal loans, letting your students know 
these different things or different um, types of loans. And then also like the different terminology that goes along with loans, such as subsidized and unsubsidized. Um, it can definitely be overwhelming, but the studentaid.gov is a great website for um, student loans and education around student loans. And then, although this may seem very, very obvious, letting your, talking with your students and making sure they understand how student loans work and that they have to be paid back, um, that there's a difference between student loans, scholarships, and grants. Those are all different types of aid. Um, because sometimes I've come across situations where students aren't aware um, that student loans have to be paid back or that they even have student loans and they just assume that they had all grants or things of that nature. So having that discussion as well. Um, another thing on the topic of student loans is talking with your students, especially as they're approaching graduation, about the repayments of their student loans and when that starts back. Um, normally you get with federal loans, you get like a six month grace, six months grace period before you start have to start paying back your loans. And so letting students know, like, that's like the general timeline. And if you have private loans, then that timeline may be a little bit different. And so you'll have to refer back to your um, loan paperwork to figure out what the timeline will be or reach out to your, your lender for those. Um, another conversation to have with your student is about protecting their personal information. Um, so this is very, very important. Um, we know that there are lots of um, individuals out there who are trying to get our personal um, information. And so students may be um, um, prey to this or they may be victims to this along with the rest of us. And so we wanna make sure that our students understand how to make sure that their personal information is secure. So we encourage you to talk about monitoring financial accounts for unauthorized activity. Uh, most of the, the banking um, accounts or checking accounts or debit cards, credit cards, banks, they have these um, processes in place where if they're, they think it's fraudulent activity, then they'll like send you like some type of alert or something. Um, so making sure students are monitoring that to make sure that the purchases that they're being charged for are actually purchases that they have made or authorized. Um, talking with them about the important, importance of how to keep their credit and debit cards um, safe and their passwords secure. Um, whether they be passwords for banking apps or um, where they're doing online shopping or anything like that, just, just um, emphasizing the importance of making sure you have those safety or some safety parameters put in place to protect that information. Um, another thing to note here is talking with your student about understanding identity theft and how to avoid it. Um, and that's why it's super important to protect their personal information. Um, however, if um, a student or if your student is a victim of identity theft, the um, consumer.gov website, they have lots of great information about how to, um, what to do in a situation of identity theft. Um, and they kind of outline the steps you should take, what students should do, et cetera. So that's another great resource uh, for if your student is a victim of identity theft. Um, but yeah, just reminding them of like their personal information is super important. And so they need to make sure they're protecting that um, by any means necessary. One more thing that I thought of that I wanna go back to this slide um, that goes along with making sure they're protecting their personal information um, is also making sure they're protecting their credit information. And so, um, I definitely encourage students and anyone for that matter to always check their credit report to make sure that there isn't any fraudulent activity on their credit report. Um, so all U.S. citizens get one um, free credit report from each of the three bureaus each year um, where they can like look at the information that's on their credit report. And so that's another thing that um, we want to encourage our students to do so that they take ownership of their um, credit information, their credit history, and make sure that there is nothing that should not be on there. 
All right, so the final conversation um, topic or conversation you should have with your student kind of centers around identifying financial services that fit their specific needs. Um, and so this goes along the lines of like helping your students or educating them about checking and savings account options, um, especially those that are going to be beneficial for them. Um, they're going to be away from home. And so if they're um, the institution that they bank with at home is not located here in Tuscaloosa, then seeking out other options that are going to be better or best for them while they're here. Um, and just knowing the difference between checking accounts and savings account options and like all those fees and et cetera. Um, also talking about ATM fees. So let's say that their institution is not here and they're going to remain with their, their financial institution, then what those ATM fees may look like um, when they visit um, other institutions and use their ATM machine. Um, if their accounts have like a minimum balance that they have to adhere to, any special features, uh, any of the online banking tools or features that their specific institution provides. And then also identifying how to transfer money between accounts and financial institutions if a need ever arises. Um, and so having that plan in place is super important um, for you and your students. All right, so as I wrap up this presentation, there are a couple of resources that I want to bring to your attention that are available to all of our UA students. Um, the first one is the mymoney.ua.edu website. So this is UA's financial literacy website that is tailored specifically for our students. Um, we created this with our students in mind, and we just wanted a resource or a place for them to visit that had lots of financial literacy information all in one place. So they didn't have to go and like seek out different avenues for getting different sources of information. Um, the financial literacy website is kind of broken down um, into sections based on where your student is in their tenure here at the university. So there's a section for incoming students that kind of talks about specific tools that are specific for them um, that they may need at that point in their journey here at UA. Um, for example, there's a cost of um, attending calculator that is in our incoming students section. So students and parents can get an idea of how much um, attending the university is and um, what expenses to expect, et cetera. Um, there's a section for our current students, um, as well as our graduating students, and then a section for our graduate students. And so although all this information is important for all UA students, um, depending where students are, some information may be more pertinent to them and their current status um, versus other information. So although it's all good information overall. Um, so that's our financial literacy website. We also have a peer financial coaching program. Um, and this program is something that we launched the spring of 2020 and it utilizes UA students. And so we have, we recruit UA students. Generally we recruit accounting majors, personal finance majors, but it's open to any students. And they complete a certified financial counselor certification. Um, and then upon that, upon completion of that, they also undergo coaching training so that they can relate to their fellow peers. And then once they complete that, they are um, our peer financial coaches and they're able to offer sessions to other students um, regarding different financial topics. And so these sessions are free, they're confidential, they're about 30 minute sessions, one-on-one um, -on -one sessions with the peer financial coach. And you can, our students can work with their peer financial coach on a variety of financial topics. So for example, if they wanna work on creating the financial goal, they can work on that. They wanna talk about different banking options, budgeting, credit, um, debt or student loan repayment, any of those things, they can meet one-on-one -on -one with the coach to do so. And then lastly, um, my department does a variety of financial wellness presentations for like um, classrooms and different student organizations on campus. And so we tailored these presentations um, for our students. Most of them are geared towards our incoming students, but um, all students here at UA can benefit from those. 
But I think that is gives you an idea of all of our resources. Um, so thank you for your time today. I hope y'all have a great rest of the day. Yes, thank you so much, Tiffany. This presentation was great. Um, please don't hesitate to, to contact Tiffany if you have any additional questions. I'm sure she won't mind. Um, or please contact our office. I want to thank you again for um, joining us for our webinar Wednesday. Next week, we will have Dr. Uh, Rosalind Moore Miller talking about student um, well, social wellness um, and engagement. So please tune in for that. Um, thank you and have a, a great Wednesday and roll tide.